You know, sometimes we ignore clubs just because they aren't from the top brands. But still products get ignored from top brands and that's when they've perhaps built a reputation in a specific market area. So therefore, when they release something that they're not quite known for, well, we still choose to ignore them. I reckon that's a big mistake, certainly in today's video. You see, if I mention a brand like Mizuno, then the first thing you're gonna think about, well, that's gonna be irons. Cobalt, sit. And whilst Mizuno's reputation has certainly grown in recent years in terms of their driver and their fairway woods, I would argue that they're making a few products that are definitely going under the radar a little bit unnoticed and they're probably some of the best in the business. Now I've got to say that um, over the last couple of years that a statement I never thought I would make and that is that Mizuno putters are very much the real deal right now. Only two years ago did I first try a Mizuno putter and this is the kind of uh, second iteration if you like and I've got to say they are really really impressive and in today's video I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't be overlooking these things. Now I rarely feature any putters on this channel and there's got to be a good reason to do so. So stick around and I can assure you that what I'm about to tell you about the Mizuno in terms of the technology that's built into it is really interesting. There's also some negatives that I will not also reveal that are in my opinion. But seriously, this is a putter range that was well worth a video. Let's put it that way. Right, okay, so like I said, second iteration of what was the M-Craft putters, as far as I've seen at least anyway, and these are the M-Craft M-O-I. I don't know that's one word you're supposed to say. I have no idea how that's pronounced. All I do know is, first of all, let's have a look at these things because they look incredibly good. They're milled from 1025 forged steel. The face milling on the front and the detail and the precision of that milling is so, so pretty. They look superb. There's three models to choose from in terms of their head shape, and in terms of their head shape, there are three different color options. So there is a very reduced range, if you like, and I'll talk about that later. But first of all, I think we can all agree, these are some of the best looking putters that I've ever seen come to market. Right, so the first thing to discuss is just how good these things feel. As you would expect, nothing feels like a Mizuno in terms of their irons. Well, I can also tell you, nothing quite feels like their 1025 mil steel in terms of off that putter face. It's super soft, which was the thing that really drew my attention to last year's model. The three models, silver, blue, and black, they all have a very much a specific uh, exact color name to them but they all are a really, really nice finish, and that's gonna be uh, very much what suits your personal eye. Read that one wrong hand. But there's a couple of things that are really interesting to me. First of all, it is a very much a forgiving putter. And the way they've done that is they've increased the weight, the head mass, and to do that, they've reduced the uh, weight in the grip and also in the shaft, so that you certainly do feel the putter down at address. That is one significant thing that they have done. And what they claim that does, it makes the putter ultra stable in terms of its weight. But then you'll notice these things on the bottom. You see with every purchase of the putter, you get one of these little kits and inside of there, you'll get a little tool which will remove those weights. The standard weight that you'll see in your putter is eight grams, but you get the option of two three gram weights and two 13 gram weights and they can make a considerable difference, obviously, to the weight of the putter head and change how it feels in your hands. So I love the idea of that little kit that gives that bit of customizability to a putter. You see, the thing is for me, golf is very much about individual requirements, individual needs. And what that weighting system does is allow you to very much build that uh, putter to a headway, to a swing weight, to very much your own custom needs. Now, the one thing I'm going to show you is the three models each have very much a different sort of uh, toe hang, and it's a considerable difference from very much the sort of face balance mallet uh, to some severe toe hang there in, uh, in the opposite end of the spectrum. And each of those will obviously, uh, well, suit a particular type of putting stroke. Go out, roll out, roll out. Oh. For me personally, I would always be the sort of mallet style and that's very much a sort of uh, straight back, straight through putting style and the more toe hang depends on that sort of curve and arc in your swing path. 
So they cover each of the bases, but in a minimal way. And that is perhaps one of the negatives as well. And I say one of the negatives, because in fact, in my opinion, there are two. So the first being that uh, limited choice in terms of uh, options, very much three classic style, and arguably two style of putter heads. Yes, there's a change in the color and a change in the neck, but that's very limited when you compare to some of the bigger boys and the choices that they offer. You could argue that that's where Mizuno are just gonna fall down a little. And they're very much classic in terms of their, uh, their sight lines and their alignment age. There's nothing fancy going on there. They're classic style putters. And arguably again, people sometimes just want a little bit more assistance in terms of alignment. And then the final negative for me is the price points. They're coming in at 269 and for me, that's a high, high price point, even though looking at each of them, the quality of the build is superb. I can understand how Mizuno might justify that price in terms of the quality of the product, but they're trying to get into this marketplace as far as I'm concerned. And to do that, I think they need to be a little bit keener in terms of what the end user pays in terms of that price point. And it's all a bit bump bunker, it's carrying. Oh, no. Actually just gone through to the back fins. It's playing proper Lynx fiery conditions here at Carden Bar right now, fast and firm. Anyway, enough of my game about the putters. I said I rarely do a review on putters, only if they really are something just a little bit special and a little bit different. And I think they're probably both. They're really special in terms of their build quality and the way they're put together. They feel absolutely superb, look really, really good. And without repeating this whole video again, my only negatives are, like I said, about the price point um, and perhaps the limited amount of options they've got. But certainly for me, if you put head to head any of these putters against some of the premium putter lines out there, Mizunos would stand tall. I'm telling you now, they're really, really impressive in terms of how these have been put together. So if you're considering buying a putter, and if you're willing to shell out that sort of 269 and upwards price, then I would certainly put these into the mix. Right, thank you for watching. I'm gonna finish off and see if we can all that one out for birdie and uh, last few holes here at Carden Park. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon.